lesson we'll discuss alternative approaches to opportunity finding, specifically focusing on more complex opportunities where the problem is non-obvious. It's these types of problems that require your full creative problem-solving skill. In this lesson, we'll provide an overview of three of the most important tools and approaches that can help you identify opportunities for you to apply your creative problem-solving ability to solve. First, we're going to talk about design thinking. We're going to then talk about the five whys. And finally, we're going to use trend analysis. The first two are designed to uncover problems that are already known to exist, while the third enables you to identify and find new opportunities. The first approach, design thinking, is a methodology that does actually cover all the stages of the creative problem-solving process, but starts with a very important first stage, which we'll focus on in this lesson. It's called empathy. And it basically means that you put yourself in the position of the person who is experiencing a problem. It changes the perspective on how you look at problems. The five elements of design thinking, empathy, design, ideate, prototype, and feedback, are all inherently part of the creative problem solving process. But empathy is the most important. Design thinking actually traces back to Herbert Simon's book in 1969, when he talked about design in general as solving problems. And it was applied to engineering and architecture before David Kelly, who was at Stanford, founded the design consultancy, IDEO, in 1991. Design thinking starts by asking you to look at the problem as if you were the user and to ask important questions such as what are you experiencing, how and why. My colleague Rob McNamee explains the basis of design thinking. Design thinking and a similar perspective known as jobs to be done, which analyzes what jobs people hire products or services to do both help you identify new opportunities. Further details on each of these approaches are included in the resources section of this course. The second approach I wanted to discuss is called the five whys. It's a technique to go below the surface of the symptoms of a problem to identify root causes. It's often used to help refine the problem in a way that enables alternate solutions to be developed. Five whys can be used to examine problems as diverse as why you're experiencing poor customer service or the rapid deterioration of stonework on a monument. The latter is a classic example of the use of the five whys as it was addressed by the US National Park Service who were faced with the problem that the stonework on the Jefferson Memorial in Washington was deteriorating more rapidly than anticipated. The stone in this building was crumbling. What could be causing this decay? It turns out that it was actually the frequent washings of the stone that was creating the problem. The reason they washed it so often was because there were so many bird droppings on the building. Then they asked themselves, well, why are there so many birds in the building? There's an abundant food supply. Hundreds and hundreds of little fat spiders. So then they asked themselves, why are there so many spiders? The spiders were attracted by the midges, thousands of tiny little insects. So they asked themselves, why are there so many midges? Every evening at dusk, millions of these midges emerge in a mating frenzy. Also, at the same time every evening, the National Park Service turns on the powerful spotlights that illuminate the monument. The excited midges are attracted to the light. The solution? The Park Service has delayed the daily lighting of the structure to one hour after sunset. The midge population is down 90%, they've broken the food chain, and there are less frequent washings. So, make sure you're working with all the information and get to the true root cause of the problem. The results can be literally night and day. Using the five whys to uncover the root cause of the problem and move away just from the symptom led to a deeper and improved understanding of the problem, which in turn led to a much better solution. The final approach to finding an opportunity uses another tool that's called trend analysis, and it anticipates likely future scenarios that allow you to synthesize new opportunities, often by combining insights from two of the trends. My colleague Rob McNamee explains trend analysis using a specific tool called PEST. 
A simple and widely used framework that helps you analyze trends is called PEST analysis. PEST is an acronym that stands for political, economic, sociocultural, and technological, and refers to four big buckets or categories into which various trends can be organized. There's another version that breaks out environmental and legal as separate categories called PESTL, but we'll use PEST as a starting point. Doing a PEST analysis helps you understand the big picture forces of change that you and your organizations are exposed to. Specifying these four or six major categories of trends helps make sure you don't overlook a set of trends that may be important. PEST trends are things that companies typically have no control over, but which directly affect your future. From this analysis, you can identify opportunities as well as assess any challenges to an idea or existing business you're evaluating. The P in PEST stands for political trends and often includes legal trends if PESTL is not being used. Political trends refer to the pressures and opportunities brought about by government regulation and oversight of an industry. It includes things like changes in local and international laws, shift in intellectual property protection norms, increases or decreases in taxes, changes in foreign trade policy, elections of different officials, shifting power of political parties, increased or refocused lobbying efforts, changing legal climate, new wars and conflicts, or uncertainty regarding wars and conflicts in various regions changing perspectives and interventions of international governing bodies, etc. Recent examples of political trends in the U.S. include an increased focus on terrorism and increased conflict in the Middle East after September 11th, immigration reform, marijuana legalization, new sustainability and pro-health regulations and laws, etc. The E in PEST stands for economic and touches on the economic situation relevant to your domain, market, organization, or industry. Economic factors include those that affect your organization's costs, as well as economic factors that affect consumers' buying decisions. How is the economy at home and abroad? Is it getting stronger or weaker? Are people more or less certain about their futures than they were in the past? How are interest rates, inflation, and overall economic conditions affecting people's tendency to spend versus save money? Economic trends also include changes that affect your organization's ability to secure financing, market and trade cycles relevant to your industry, market growth, etc. Some examples of economic trends include the impending home loan interest rate hikes, more women in the workforce over the last 50 years or so, and thus greater income for family units. The global recession, less people retiring, partly because of the recession, changes in luxury purchasing and saving behaviors among some segments, etc. The S in PEST stands for sociocultural. Sociocultural trends refer to lifestyle trends such as family size and demographic changes such as age, racial, and ethnic diversity and gender, as well as overall changes in consumers' attitudes, opinions, and demands. These also include other cultural drivers like role models, celebrities, and influencers, as well as subgroups like religious or professional groups. Trends in this category include increase in families where both parents work over the last few decades, people being, or at least feeling, more and more busy, increased life stress, changing family and work patterns, as well as more focus on work-life balance, increased diversity in the workplace, greater globalization of industries, increased focus on health and fitness, the increased prevalence of do-it-yourselfers or expert hobbyists, proliferation of computers and the internet, dramatic increase in mobile phones and constant connectivity, etc. Finally, the TMPES stands for technological trends. Given the amount of technology we're surrounded with these days, students frequently have the easiest time understanding and identifying technological trends. Technology trends include current technology becoming more reliable and more broadly adopted, new technologies being invented, development paths for these technologies, changes in how people use these technologies, maturity of current technologies, and the full life cycle of technologies, including technological obsolescence. Using a formal tool such as PEST or Foresight to anticipate possible futures allows you to identify potential new problems or opportunities before they occur, and then to use a creative problem-solving approach to start to develop solutions. There are several similar tools to help you find opportunities, some of which are included as resources on the site. Over time, you can try them all and see which you prefer to use in the situations that you face. These three approaches will help you find opportunities, and in the next lesson, we'll discuss three techniques that can help you build on outcomes from these processes to collect data in order to help you clarify the problem you're trying to address.